Shalom, shalom, shalom. Sell thy yield for one nation, one power. Giving it up for the tribe of Gad. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, get your Bible, get your pencil, and get your paper. We're going to go in one more time before I go back to work next week, this week. We're going to go in one more time today. I think I'm going to title this, the, the Presence of the Most High. The Presence of the Most High. And I hope that this little quick lesson will show you how we have allowed ourselves to be disconnected from the Spirit of the Most High God. So get your King James Version Bible. Blow that dust off of it. Get your pencil and get your paper. Don't believe nothing I say because I'm going to show you the Bible. Now, we, we, we got these certain brothers among us that has this misunderstanding that the presence of God, uh, for some strange reason, did not reside in the Old Testament. Now, we have all of these people out here only believing in the New Testament and still don't believe in the spirit of the Most High God. So, today, once again, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Most High God, from which we take no credit for, and we give all the glory and the honor to. Hello. Go with me first. Where we want to go first? Let's go to the book of Joshua. I told you guys we do the whole Bible. From Revelation 22, 21, I mean, uh, uh, Genesis uh, 1 and 1 to Revelation 22 and 21, and everything in between. We do the whole Bible. So on this channel, if you're going to learn anything, you're going to learn the whole Bible. And you're going to learn to love people, and you're going to learn to respect people. You're going to learn to give honor where honor is due to people. Hello. That's what we teach. We don't teach rebellion. And we don't teach hate, and we don't teach unforgiveness, because those three traits will get you cast head first into the lake of fire. So, we trying to keep you out of the lake of fire. Hello. And for some of you out there that's been taught this doctrine and taught that doctrine, please, whatever you do, if you have any questions, I'll answer them. But don't come on this channel trying to tell me your false doctrine. Come on up out of here. I don't need to hear your false doctrine. I've been around the Bible for 20 years, over 20 years. That's right. A Baptist, huh? Church of God in Christ, a Pentecostal. I've been studying this Bible over 20 years. I know every false slick doctrine that comes along. That's right. And then you got people trying to teach the Bible that don't know what word goes where. So for all of you out there, you are new Old Testament only brothers and sisters. You my brother and you my sister. But where you get mixed up is when the Most High says, I am God and there is none else. He's saying creator. The earth is full of gods. You will make God out of a liar. Numbers 23, 19, he told you he's not a liar. So when they translated that word, put that word, oh, I'm God and there is none else. He telling you he the creator and there is none else. Do you know any other creators? Do you know any other creators? Anywhere in history did you learn that there was somebody else made the heavens and the earth? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. I'm over 50. I, I, I've been in America a long time. I ain't heard nobody teaching that somebody. I heard about Mother Nature. <laughs> But I ain't never heard about no God creating stuff. That's what that word there is supposed to be creator. He is the creator and there is none else. He know not any. He's held down here from one nation, one power. Throwing out some, some, some food. Hello. So now, let's go to the book of Joshua. And we're going to deal with the presence of the Most High in the Torah. Hello. We're going to Joshua chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 10. Joshua 3 and 10. We're going to think, I think we're going to just do the book of Joshua and the book of 1 Samuel. That's all we're going to have to do to get this breakdown. 
Joshua chapter 3, starting at verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God, I'm going to read it just like this, because we have little children come on this channel. Hello. I'm not here to get conf teach confusion. So all you grown-ups that know the name, humble yourselves. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 10. And Joshua said, and Joshua said, and Joshua said. Why am I repeating that? Because I want you to see what Joshua is about to say. And Joshua said, hereby you shall know that the living God is among you. Where he at? Among you. Where he at? Among you. Where he at? In the midst of you. Where he at? Hanging out with you. Where he going to be at? And Joshua said, hereby you shall know that the living God is among you. That the Most High is among you. And that he will, without fail, drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the per Hevites, and the Perizzites, and the Gergeshites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. What? So, wait a minute. First off, the presence of God got to be among us. And then when we let the presence of God be among us, then he promised to do what? He promised to do what? So if God is not among us, he ain't driving out nut. I pray you seen that. Let me read it real slow again. Verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby shall you know that the living God is among, uh, among you, and that he will drive out, he will without fail drive out from a, before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gergeshites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes before you into Jordan. Verse 12. Now therefore take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Wait a minute. He's the God of how much? Of the earth? All the earth. That's why we root all the earth. Let's read verse 13 again. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the most high, the most high of all the earth, all the earth, all the earth, all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand up on the heap. We're going to stop right Go on, one more. Verse 1, 14. And it came to pass, when the people were moved from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, verse 15, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all its banks all the time of harvest. All the time when? Of harvest. All the time when? Of harvest. It didn't overflow all of its banks all year round, just in harvest time. The Most High gave that water, extra water, in harvest time when the people's lives were obedient unto him. He blessed them. Now, let's keep going. We want now Joshua chapter 4. Stay in Joshua chapter 4. We're talking about the Most High's presence being among us in the ark. Joshua chapter 4, we want to start in verse uh, verse 8. Joshua chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 8. Let me make sure I'm in Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4. And verse 8, let's go. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded. And took up 12 stones out of the midst of Jordan, which represent the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up 12 stones out of the midst of Jordan, 
as the Most High spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Verse 9, And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan. Where they at? In the midst of Jordan. Where they at? In the midst of Jordan. In the place where the feet of the priests, which bear the ark of the covenant, stood. And they are there until this day. And they are there until this day. Letting you know we going back. Hello. Cross the joy. Verse 10. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of joy. Until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people. According to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And that the people hasted and passed over. Verse 11. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Most High passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people stopped. Let's go, stay in Joshua, go to chapter 6. We're dealing with the presence of the Most High in the ark. Joshua chapter 6, and verse number 10 and 11. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. Verse 11. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Verse 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Most High went on continually and blew the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the ark rearward came after the ark of the Most High, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they could pass the city once and returned into camp. So, did, so, did, so they did how many days? Six. So the people had to stay silent and quiet for how many days? Six. The people were not allowed to talk or converse for how many days? Six. We'll have a hell of a time with that today, wouldn't we? <laughs> we'll have duct tape rolls. Of du <laughs> Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the, with the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, Shout! What? Shout! What? They blew the trumpets, and then they did what? They shouted. For the most High had given you the city. Talking about Jericho. So, it's a time to keep quiet and it's a time to shout. Was they carrying the ark? Yes, they were. Did it represent the presence of the Most High? Yes, it did. Now let's keep going. Go to First Samuel. Go to First Samuel. Go to First Samuel. Chapter 4, 1 Samuel, chapter 4. Now remember, they were carrying the ark, which represented the presence of the Most High God. 1 Samuel, chapter 4. We're going to start at verse number five, number 5. I'm in 2 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 4. 1 Samuel, chapter 4. 1 Samuel, chapter 4. We're dealing with the presence of the Most High. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 5. Verse 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Most High came into the camp, all Israel what? Shouted. All Israel what? Shouted. All Israel what? Shouted. All Israel what? Shouted. Does this sound like the Christian church? <laughs> Verse 
You see what kind of shouting this is? This shout of joy. This ain't shouting cussing people out. Let's read verse 5 again. And when the ark of the covenant of the Most High came into the camp, all Israel shouted, shouted with a great shout. That means at the top of their voice. How long has it been, Hebrews, since you was able to shout at the top of your voice for the Most High? Since you've been a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> oh, we still shout. Can you tell? <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 5 again. And when the ark of the covenant of the Most High came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Verse 6. Let's see the effects of this shout. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? What's all this noise going on howling? In the camp of the Hebrews. And they understood that the ark of the Most High was coming to the camp. What? They, the Philistines understood that when they heard our ancestors shout a great shout. That the presence of the Most High God had come into the camp. You better come on up out of here. But today. We act as if we can do it all by ourselves and on our own without the presence of the Most High God. Well, I'm here today to, de to, to destroy the gainsayers, to destroy all of those that think they're going to get anything accomplished without the Spirit of the Most High. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Most High. Let's continue. Go now. Stay in 1 Samuel. Go to uh, verse 19 and 21. Now we're going to get a look at what happened when the Ark of the Covenant or the presence of the Most High was stolen by the Philistines. Let's see if our ancestors just continued on with their life. You know what I'm saying? Preaching the word without God. You know, going about their life, doing whatever they need to do without God. Didn't have no spirit or presence of God among them anymore. So let's see if they continue to just continue to go about their religious traditions without the spirit of God. Let's see if this caused a negative reaction. Can we? Let's go. Stay in 1 Samuel chapter 4. And we're going to begin at verse 17. Yeah, let's stay, let's, let's stay verse, verse 17. And the messengers answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there has been also a great slaughter. Why? The Most High wanted to kill Hophni and Phinehas. And then Eli fell backwards off the car and he died. Hophni and Phinehas was living wicked as hell. Hophni and Phinehas was supposed to be the priests of the Most High, representing the Most High. But Hophni and Phinehas was banging all of the daughters of Zion and doing whatever the hell they wanted to do. So the Most High wanted to get them. So in order to get them, the Most High had the Philistines come, and the Philistines took the presence of God out from among the nation of Israel at this time in history. See what he'll do to the leaders? Verse uh, 17. And the messengers answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phineas, are dead. Are uh, what? Dead. Most I know how to get rid of fake leaders. Dead. He know how to kill them. Dead. He know when to get them. Dead. He put them down like dogs. Hophni and Phineas are dead. And the ark of God is taken. Verse 18. And it came to pass when he, when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward. By the side of the gate, and his neck break, and he died. For he was an old man, and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. Now Eli fell off the cart when he heard that the ark or the presence of God was taken by the Philistines. He fell off the, he passed the hell out. This is how serious it is when the presence of God is not among his people. It's a dying matter. Verse 19. 
and his daughter-in-law Phineas, his wife, one of his wives, Phineas, his wife, was with child near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. Verse 20. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. Verse 21. And she named the child Ichabod. And she named the child Ichabod. And she named Phineas's child, the son, Ichabod. Here this boy is, his whole life, walking around in Israel. His name is going to be Ichabod, so that when everybody see him from the age of three, hey Ichabod, from the age of 10, hey Ichabod, from the age of 20, hey Ichabod, that all of Israel will know what? Let's keep reading. Say, the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. What? The glory of the Most High is departed from Israel because the ark of God is taken. Here this boy whose name was Ichabod who the Most High wanted them to see him. Every day walking in the camp, they had to say his name, Ichabod. The glory of the Most High is gone. The presence of the Most High is gone. Now go with me to Jeremiah 3 and 16. And today, we don't even consider that the presence of God, the Most High, is gone. But I consider, because I live for it every day. I need this presence. I need this anointing. I don't know about who I'm talking to out there, but you need it too. If not, you operating under Ichabod. Jeremiah chapter 3. Verse, uh, what we want? Verse number 16. Jeremiah 3 and 16. Let's see what Jeremiah later on had to say about the ark. Jeremiah chapter 16. Let's go up. Let's go up to verse, uh, verse 14 and down. Because they were still backsliding. After the glory had departed. After the son's name was Ichabod. Jeremiah 3.14. Turn, O backsliding children, says the Most High. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, verse 16. And it shall come to pass, when you, have, when you be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, says the Most High, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Most High, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Stop. The Most High just made a prophecy in Jeremiah 3.16 that the day was going to come when you guys were going to completely forget about the ark of the covenant about the glory of the Most High, about the presence of God. This is Jeremiah 3.16. This is a, let's read it again. And it shall come to pass, when you have multiplied and increased in the land, you're going to be blessed. In those days, says the Most High, they shall no more say, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Why? Ichabod is still going on. The glory, the presence of the Most High. They ain't gonna even, it's going to come a time when they're not going to even consider it. Let's 
going to come a time when they're not going to even consider the presence of God and that they are operating under Ichabod. Living their lives every day under Ichabod. Walking around every day under Ichabod. Not even paying attention that they are operating under Ichabod. But the prophet today is letting you know that the Most High made a promise. Go with me to Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Now you're going to get a deeper understanding of why this passage was a promise of the future and it happened in Acts chapter 2. Because the glory returned in the earth in the form of the Holy Spirit in fire and in tongues. Go with me now to Joel chapter 2 and verse number 27. Joel chapter 2 and verse number 27. We want 28. Joel 2 and 28. And it shall come to pass afterward, afterward, after. Why do you say afterward? After Ichabod, after my glory has departed, it shall come to pass afterward, afterward, after they have forgotten about my spirit, after they have forgotten about my presence, after they lived their lives all of those years without me under Ichabod, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Stop. This happened in Acts chapter 2 at the day of Pentecost. The Most High poured out His Spirit. His glory returned to the nation of Israel. His glory returned to the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, my brother and my sister, I just destroyed any and all gainsayers that what I just taught you is spookisms because the Most High operated in His presence in Torah. And now he's poured it out in Acts chapter 2 to the whole nation, all 12 tribes. So now, harden not your hearts as your fathers did in the wilderness. The Holy Spirit is here. Shalom.